In this clip, we'll review the different types of objects we'll be placing in our process diagram. We'll then review the different parts and processes we need to consider for the example diagram we'll be building. And then finally, we'll see how to create diagrams in the application itself. Now, in Process Analysis 360, we're going to be using four main types of objects in our example. First, we have sources. This is basically anything that comes into the receiving area of your factory. It could be raw materials such as tubing or sheet metal, or it could also be purchased components. We also have processors, and these are machines or work cells where the parts are processed and can include activities such as cutting, machining, welding, or assembling parts together. We also have buffers, and these are basically areas where we can store and keep our parts in between the different processes. And then we have products, and these are the finished goods which are required to run a simulation, and it basically serves as an endpoint to all of our processes. Now for our example, we'll build a factory to create the bike frame assembly you see in this picture. Notice it's a welded assembly with 11 total parts, and it consists of parts made from aluminum tubing that will be fabricated, sheet metal parts that will be laser cut, and cast parts that will be purchased from an outside vendor, so they will not need any processing before going to the welding station. Now for the fabricated parts, we'll create the head tube, which will be made from one and a half inch aluminum tubing, and the bottom bracket, which will be made from one and three quarter inch aluminum tubing. Both parts will be cut from tube stock that comes in 10 foot length pieces. And after the cutting operation, they will need to be deburred before they're ready for the welding operation. Now the C-tube will have a similar process made from one and a half inch stock and cut from 10 foot long tube stock, but one end will need to be mitered so it fits properly on the bottom bracket. After that, it will also get deburred before it's ready for the welding station. So let's go ahead and start creating our diagram. We'll go ahead and start a new file and we'll name it Process Analysis Tutorial. Now in the user interface, notice on the left I have access to my object creation tools such as sources, processors, and buffers. Along the bottom we have our simulation tools which we'll look at in a later video. On the right we have our properties window that lets us look at any object properties and change them which again we'll look at later. And across the top, we have our standard tools like copy, paste, and grouping objects together. So let's go ahead and start our diagram by adding our sources. Now we're going to need a one and a half inch aluminum tubing source. We're going to need a one and three quarter inch tubing source. And even though we're going to do our sheet metal a little bit later, we'll still go ahead and create that source as well. Now if I double click on any of the names, it lets me go ahead and add any name that I want. Now that we have our sources, Let's go ahead and add our first processor, which is our tube cutter. Now we're going to need three operations, one for each part. So we can click on this little plus sign a couple times and we can get additional operations. Now it's easier if you name them something that makes sense. So we can double click on them and we'll go ahead and name them head tube, seat tube, and the bottom bracket. Now once we have the processor set up, we want to go ahead and connect the raw material or the source to the appropriate operation on our processor. So in this case, our one and a half inch tubing is going to connect to our head tube and our seat tube. And the bottom bracket is made from one and three quarter inch tubing, so we'll connect those two ports together as well. Now I can click on any objects after I create these connections and move them around to make it look better and line up better. So now let's go ahead and create our first set of buffers. Now we're going to create three buffers, one for each part, and we're going to name them again head tube, seat tube, and bottom bracket. And we're going to put a one at the end just to indicate that this is our first set of buffers. Once we create that, we're going to go ahead and connect that to our processor we recently created. And then it's really easy to clean up our diagram and make it look better. All you have to do is click drag on any of the lines and it will automatically create an elbow so that you can move the connections around. You can make them line up. You can just make your diagram look a whole lot better and a whole lot easier to read. Now the next processor we need to create is just for the seat tube because that's the only one that needs to be mitered. So we're going to go ahead and create a mitering processor and connect that just to our seat tube buffer. Then we'll go ahead and create another buffer for our seat tubes and we'll call this our second set of buffering stations. 
And after that, we're going to go ahead and create our deburring processing station. And here, again, we're going to need three different operations, one for each of our different parts. And once we create those three operations, again, we'll go ahead and connect that with the appropriate buffers. Now, again, we'll go ahead and clean up our connection lines to make our diagram look a little bit better and easier to read. And then we're gonna go ahead and create our third set of buffers, again, one for each part, our head tube, our seat tube, and our bottom bracket. And we're gonna go ahead and put a three behind this to designate that this is our third set of buffers. Then we'll go ahead and connect the appropriate operations of our deburring processor to the corresponding buffers and clean up the connection lines. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next stage of our diagram process. So now that our fabricated parts are ready for the welding station, let's go back and look at our sheet metal parts. These are basically the dropouts, and these are going to be cut from four by eight foot sheets of metal inside of our laser cutting machine. And each sheet will have several of each of those parts cut from it as part of the process. So going back to our diagram, we're gonna scroll back to the beginning where we have our sheet metal source material, and we're going to create a laser cutting process. Now, we only need one operation because one operation is going to cut several left side dropouts as well as the right side dropouts. So we'll go ahead and connect the raw material to our processor. But for the output, because we're actually cutting two different parts in one operation, we're going to need two different buffers. One for our left side dropout and one for our right side dropout. So that's all we really need to do right now to get our sheet metal parts ready for the welding station. So the next step is to go back and look at our cast parts. So we'll have four different cast parts. One is the top tube, the down tube, the chain stays, and the seat stays. Now these will be treated as raw materials or sources as they come into our receiving area and we're ready to bring them to the welding station so that they can be processed. So we'll go ahead and going back to our diagram, we'll go ahead and we'll add four sources across the bottom. We'll go ahead and give them the name of top tube, down tube, chain stay, and seat stay. And then we'll go ahead and create our welding station and we're going to put our welding station which again is a processor we're going to put that to the right of all of these other objects that we've just recently created now before we connect all the different pieces to our new welding station we're going to go ahead and create our end product which is our welded frame and then we're going to go ahead and connect that as the final output from our welding station so now that we have that prepared, we're gonna go ahead and go back to each of the previous objects that we've created, all of these 11 parts that are now ready to be processed in the welding station. And we're gonna make all of those different connections. And after we make these final connections, then we're gonna go ahead and clean up the lines. We're going to make this look better. And once we have this all cleaned up, if I zoom out here, you can see now as we walk through this process, we were able to create a conceptual or schematic diagram that represents the material flow of our product or our parts through our factory. Now in the next video clip, we're going to look at how we can set properties so that we can prepare everything for a simulation.